Hello everyone, welcome to another video of quantum mechanics. In today's video, we'll be solving the path integral for a free particle. So let's begin. So in our last videos on path integrals, we actually derived the path integral, but we haven't actually solved it for any like real system yet. So to practice our path integral skills, we can solve it for the somewhat simple case of a free particle. Recall that we can write the wave function psi of xt like this over here, where this over here is called the propagator. If you watched my videos on quantum field theory, you'd probably be connecting the dots right now, since this would be a Green's function, right? But this propagator over here, we can solve this propagator by solving this, this equation, which is called the path integral. This S over here is called the action. If we're to expand this out a little bit, it's just this thing over here. So E to the I, integral over dt, and then 1 half m q dot squared minus v, the potential. So here is the action uh, from classical mechanics. And basically, what we can do is, for a free particle, the potential is zero, since there's no forces on a free particle. So you put that to be zero. So this becomes the path integral that we have to solve for a free particle. And this weird, like, curly thing over here is called the path integral measure, which is defined like this over here. So we take the limit as delta approaches zero in the end. Uh, and it turns out that this thing over here may not converge for some cases, but it will for the free particle case. So let's actually solve this path integral. Okay, so to solve this path integral, we first have to discretize this path integral. Because Right now, the way it is, the path integral is continuous, right? We have continuous paths. But in order to actually integrate each path, we have to break the path into parts. So that's where, where the discretization comes in. We have to discretize it like this over here. And we talked about this in the last video on path integrals. Um, and now what we can do is we can note that the Gaussian integral, e to the minus ax squared, it's just the square root of x over a. You can use this integral a lot to actually help us solve the path integral. Because the path integral is actually a Gaussian integral in a way. And we can do a change of variables technique. Because right now we have this m over 2 delta term in the exponential. So what we can do is you can just do a change of variables. Define uh, qj as this over here. Or really define yj as that. And then taking the derivatives, we get this for the, for the differential forms. That would mean that we'd have to input this factor over here. We're going to have n minus 1 over 2. Since we, do, since we do this integral n minus 1 times, so that's why we have an n minus 1 over here. Due to this change of variables, you can see that this exponential is much more clean. We don't have the m over 2 and delta anymore. So it's much more cleaner. We still want to keep the i, though, because the i is going to help us uh, gain this Gaussian integral form. So we're going to keep the i there. And yeah, now we have this new path integral over here. Um, and what does this mean, right? All this means, it looks kind of intimidating, right? But all this means is we are taking the integral over the paths y multiple times. So all this here is the path integral. And we can just zoom in on this non-trivial part right over here. So zooming in on that part, that's just this over here, okay? So what we have to do is take the integral of this exponential multiple times, right? Over y1, y2, y3, all the way to n minus 1. Let's, let's actually integrate y1 first. So integral for y1 is going to be this over here. We could technically keep going because this is a series over here, right? So we could keep like adding more in the series. So we start off with j equals 0, right? So when j equals 0, you have y1 minus y0 squared. So that's why we have this over here. And then we have j equals 1. When j equals 1, we have y2 minus y1 squared, right? And then we keep going, right? We'd have uh, y3 minus y2, right? But we, don't, but we don't have to consider y3 minus y2 squared because we're integrating over y1 first. And this is, there's no like y1 term in here. So we can just stop right over there. So basically we have to calculate this integral first 
and to calculate its integral, we can just uh, distribute the. So we could, we could put the square for x squared minus bx. That's going to be that's going to be more uh, valuable uh, for the integral that we are going to solve. So to complete the square, we just do x squared minus b over two squared minus bx, then plus b over two squared. Add b over two squared. So we get the same OG expression over here. And then what, what we can do now is we can notice that this over here is a binomial. So it's x squared, this is just x minus b over two squared, right? And then minus b over two squared. And that'll give us the same thing as this over here. So by completing the square, we've gotten the x over here. Here the x was on both sides, but now the x is only on one side. And if you want to, want to integrate this over here, it's going to be easier to integrate it in this form. Well, it would be easy, easier to integrate it in this form right now, but if you had like e raised to this, it's going to be it's going to be easier to have the x is on just one side of the expression, if that makes sense. So let's complete the square, but for y1. Why for y1? Because we are integrating over y1. So basically inside here, inside the, the exponential we have, then what, what we can do now is we can, we can combine the like expressions. That's going to be 2y1 squared. We can factor out the y1 over here, giving us this right over here. So now what we want to do is, is actually complete the square. So like, just like from before, right, we want to complete the square with y1, okay? I have y1 squared minus y0 plus y2 times y1. So we take this middle term over here, we divide it by 2. So you have y1 squared minus y0 plus y2 over 2, and then we square that as well. And then now we can complete the square, we get y1 minus y0 plus y2 over 2 squared, and then minus y0 plus y2 over 2 squared. And we have to complete the square. So by putting this formula into the exponential, we get this new and improved integral right over here. Now what we can do, we can put back that formula for the Gaussian integral, and we can make some like connections here. So we don't have a minus in the front, okay? But we could get a minus in the front if you use a property that um, 1 over i is just negative 1. So negative 1 over i is just i. So we, so we can write this as minus 2 over i. And now we can notice that this over here looks like the, or the 2 over i looks like the a, right? And then here is like the x part, okay? Now, technically speaking, right, we're integrating over y1, not y1 minus this over here. But if you two change the variables again, right, where like u is this over here, you notice that dy1 will be the same as like du, pretty much. And then we have this other, these other terms right over here. We can just ignore those terms because those terms don't depend on y1, right? So we can pretty much write this out as the integral of this over here and then multiplied by e to the this thing over here times like minus 2 over 1, if that makes sense. So basically, using all that logic, okay, this means that this integral over here is just, it's just the square root of, well, 2 over i is a, that means it's going to be the square root of pi over 2 over 1, or just i pi over 2, and then e to the just this over here. And we can do some simple simplifications over here. So let's just look at this. Let's just zoom in on this part over here. Right? We can expand this out minus y naught squared over 2 minus y2 squared over 2 because like this divided by 4 times 2 would just be like 1 half if that makes sense and then here for the same reasons this, this is going to be um, minus y not y2 because this would be like divided by 2 and then multiply that 2 we get the same thing out 
And then here, plus y naught squared plus y2 squared. Okay, and we can notice some things over here already. We can notice that this is just going to be the same thing as 1 half times y2 minus y naught squared. And the reason is that if we were to expand this out, we'd have y2 squared, and then plus y naught squared minus 2y2 y naught times 1 half. And that's what we get since this y2 squared is minus, minus y2 squared over 2. That's just going to be 1 half y2 squared. Same thing for this over here, 1 half y naught squared. And then, and then we have a minus uh, y naught y2 right over there. So that's why it's, it's equivalent to this expression right over here. And these are just y's, by the way, drawn in a very weird way. So those are y's. And basically, this is just saying that the, our answer is the square root of y pi over 2 e to the 1 half y2 minus y naught squared. You guys might, might be partying, saying, yay, we've solved the path integral. No, we've only solved one part of the path integral. Remember that the, that the path integral, we are integrated over like all of the paths, right? So y1, y2, y3. So we have to integrate over y2 now. So you found out that this whole thing over here was just the square root of i pi over 2 e to the one half y2 minus y naught squared. Now we're left with this part over here, right? So we are left with e to the y3 minus y2, or e to the i of all of that. So e to the i. If this wasn't clear, the i over here was like multiplied, multiplied by the whole thing, not just the first term. So this i over here is mul it's multiplied by all of this. And since we have all of these integration measures over here, we have to integrate this, this whole thing over y2 as well. So we have to integrate this over here over y2 now. We intend to technically omit uh, this part over here for the same reasons as before. And this should actually be an i over 2, not a 1 over 2. Because remember that we had an, had an i over here, right? We, we forgot to include the, the i. So our answer to, to, to before should be e to the i over 2 y2 minus y naught squared. So now we have this over here. So to bring this out, we get uh, let's look at this part over here. We have, and we can factor this as, so this over two, right? You want to take this over two and, and then square it. This over two is just going to be this, right? And then we can square that part. So we are going to be left with so I have this right over, he over here, and then, so we now have this right over here, okay? So we can now just put this back into the exponential. And now we have this, we can use this Gaussian integral formula. We can see that here, A, right, if we let uh, this be minus 3 over 2 to I, A is going to be 3 over 2 I. It's going to be E to the I over 3 times Y3 minus y naught squared. So this over here is our answer. But we do have to, have, to, have to multiply by this constant in the front, right? And multiplying by that constant in the front, um, we can see that we will be left with pi i squared over three. And now you guys might be worried and saying, oh, now we have to do the third integral. But we don't, we can just stop here, okay? Because I want you guys to notice something important, okay? So the first time we did the, we did the in integral, we got the square root of i pi over 2 e to... The second time we did the integral, we got pi i squared over 3 e to i over 3, like, like what you see right over here. So this means that if you do the integral n minus 1 times, we are going to get the square root of pi i n minus 1 over n e to the i over n times y n minus y naught squared, right? Because this over here is always going to be one lower than this one over here, because here we had, this was, this was like raised to the 1, here was 2. So that's like the sort of thing that we get. And we're multiplying it by this thing right over here. 
So we can just move this down. We're multiplying it by that over here. And then we can change back our variables. Because remember that we defined qj all the way up here as this over here, right? So if you do like all of that, right? we're going to be left with this right over here after doing that change of variables to the limit as delta approaches zero or as it approaches infinity, right? But note that delta was defined as t over n, right? And here we have n times delta. So this over here is just t. So the, we don't have to actually do the limit since that just, that just comes down to being t. And this, this should actually be a q naught, by the way. And this over here is the solution to the path integral for the free particle. And we're actually done now. Um, so yeah, basically what we did, we pretty much said that this is going to the general form, right? After taking some n number of integrals. And then we can multiply this by the path integral volume uh, measure thing. And then we have to multiply it by this as well due to the new variables that we defined. And then we can just go back to the old variables by using this substitution right over here. And if we were to do that, get this right over here. Okay. And yeah, this is the answer uh, for the path integral. This is going to be G of Q naught Q N T. And that's what we see right over here, x, x naught, and t, where we could just change the q for an x, right? And we, we would just put that formula for the propagator into here, we could get the free particle wave function. That's pretty much how you would solve uh, the path integral. And instead of like qn, you can just write that out as just q if you would want to. So q would be like the final position and q naught would be the initial position so thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoy this video uh if you guys think this will help someone or if it has helped you uh, consider sharing it to someone that you know or just subscribing or don't if you don't want to it's completely fine so yeah thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video bye